Welcome to the Gamer Hour, ladies and gentlemen. The late night talk show created for you, the gamer, brought to you by Esports Network. And with that said, now's a great time to put down the controller and rest your wrist, because it's time to hang out with another pro athlete. Coming to you from Reuters Studio in Times Square, New York City, I'm your host, Chris Puckett. And we have a great show in store for you, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of in store, AMD recently revealed their new Ryzen CPUs coming out next month with a price ranging from just $300 at the lowest end to $800 on the highest end. On top of that, Nvidia announced its 3000 series of graphics cards with the RTX 3080 starting at $699. It's pretty wonderful considering I just saved up for two months. I finally got my 2080 Ti, which is now outdated, outpriced, and outpowered by, yeah, everything. <laughs> Let's be honest though, NVIDIA gave it to me for free. <laughs> oh, the joys of PC gaming. You buy the latest and greatest one month, and the next month, it's dated by new tech coming out, leaving you staring at your bank account wondering, was it all really worth it? Well, then you go home and you play Skyrim in 4K and think, hell yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, we really need to stop calling it the PC master race because the only thing being mastered here is you and your credit card. I know it's terrible. Some exciting Apex Legends news. The beta for Apex Legends crossplay has launched. Yes, you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Apex Legends officially has crossplay. <laughs> and aren't you lucky? Now you too can be jumping into lobbies filled with hackers and get killed by a guy who saw you through the walls at artillery in Kings Canyon, then miraculously aimbots you across the map with the Mozambique. <laughs> Now we have a fantastic show for you tonight and an incredible guest. He's the shooting guard for the Oklahoma City Thunder and one of the few superhumans capable of jumping over a seven foot giant. Please give it up for Hamadou Diallo. Yeah. Hamadou, my man, it is so great to have you on the show. Now, you first caught my attention when you jumped over Shaquille O'Neal at the 2019 Slam Dunk Contest. But one doesn't just start with someone as enormous as Shaq. So let's talk about this. How many humans have you hurdled in your lifetime? <laughs> I mean, Shaq is probably the biggest ever. I mean, that was a great experience, a night to uh, definitely remember. And it was just, it was just words couldn't explain that night. Did you start this? Like, is this something you do in middle school, high school? Did you ever jump over someone in a game? I started doing it in college a little bit, just like playing around after practice and whatnot. You're ridiculous. I'm six foot two, and I think I have a, a 10 inch vertical. Uh, what's your vertical right now? Uh, 45. 45, yeah, we're about even. Uh, same thing with the bank <laughs> accounts too, because let's talk about this. Winning the contest begged you $100,000 on top of your multi-million dollar contract with the Oklahoma City Thunder, and that puts you at 22 years old in the same tax bracket as Ninja. How's that feel? That's great. I mean, it's great to be doing the things that you love to do. Now we just got to get you like Ninja, get that, uh, get that Adidas sponsorship. Is it Adidas, <laughs> Reebok? Who are we going with? Man, whoever, whoever comes with it at this point. I mean, right now I'm a sneaker free agent and I'm just trying to figure out what's the best brand for me and who do I want to collab with, basically. But there's a lot of good brands out there, so it should be an interesting summer. I love that answer. If you needed to be connected with this agent, we got you guys. Hit us up on the website, thegamerhour.com. All right, now clearly you have some insane athletic ability if you're able to jump 45 inches, but has it always just been basketball for you or what sports did you play growing up? Uh, definitely just mostly basketball growing up. I mean, growing up in my neighborhood, I mean, that's pretty much all we was numb to. I mean, we had two basketball courts in the playground area and that's what everybody that was older than us did. So. Growing up is like, it was kind of like inherited. Now, a lot of people are kind of living what your life was. If you play NBA Street, you've kind of been used to the court, the New York City vibes of how everything goes. But what was it like growing up in New York City as a basketball player? Where did you play? How did you train? Because it couldn't have all just been in school. Yeah, definitely. I mean, growing up in Left Rack City, I would say, I mean, it's definitely different. I mean, being a kid there, it's hard to make it out. I mean, you have to stay focused and... You have to know what you want to do in life. I mean, growing up, I'm just happy that I had good parents and I had a good mentor and I had good friends around me that always seen that the potential in me and seen that I could really do something with this sport. And when I first started playing, I just was playing for just for the fun of it. And 
eventually I started to really love the game and started to really see that this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. I love that. And you grew up in Flushing. A lot of people from the gaming world know Flushing Queens for the incredible uh, fighting games community that we see over there. Are you a Mortal Kombat guy, a Tekken guy? Did you play any of the FGC games? I played Mortal Kombat a little bit. I'm not, I really don't play it a lot. I played it a little bit with a couple of friends on a Nintendo and stuff, but I don't really play it that much. Yeah, I know my Sub-Zero moves. That's about it these days. Uh, let's talk about your, your in-game skills because I know you play quite a bit of NBA 2K. What came first, real-life basketball skills or in-game skills for you? Playing on a video game came first. Uh, just growing up, I used to play all the little basketball games that came out, like Street Volume 1 and 2, Ballers, and NBA Lives and stuff. So I would say that came first. I mean, just growing up, you always want to play video games. Now, did you prefer to play in the position that you're playing on the court right now, or did you like to play the center? What, what, what was your go-to? Uh, when I'm playing a video game, I like to play the point because I always got the ball in my hand. Let's, let's talk about gaming and training, though, because so much goes into being a professional athlete. We talked about it last week with Josh Hart. But for you, how do you find time to do both? Is gaming an off-season thing? Is it something that you do throughout the season? How's it work for you? You just have to find a balance. I mean, you find a balance and... When you get your work done on the court and you take care of your job, I mean, you have some downtime. And sometimes you're going to watch movies. Sometimes you're going to hang out with friends and family. And that's when sometimes you're going to have to play gaming. It's me, most of my time is with the gaming. I love that. I mean, COVID has brought us all th closer through gaming, fortunately. It's uh, not a whole lot else to do right now. So who are you gaming with these days? What games are you playing? I mean, right now I'm playing a little bit of GTA. And I'm playing a lot of 2K with my friends. I mean, me and my friends, we just love playing 2K. And it's been great. It's been great. I mean, we love going to the park and playing against other people, making it seem like we're really back in the New York streets, going to other people's parks and playing. So it makes it brings a little bit of life to it. And it brings a lot of emotions out, I could say, a lot of emotions. Now, 2K is obviously a sports simulation. But like you said, there's a lot of uh, realistic stuff that you can take from the game. Now, is there anything that you have taken from the game and applied to your actual real life play? Or how about the other way around? Are there any dunks or moves you want to see in the game next year? Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to see uh, my rating go up a little bit. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, not really. I feel like the game is good and it's more live now. Like it feels actually real. and. The way the cr crowd sounds and all of that, and all of the animations that's added into it, and the face screens, it, it's like it's like ridiculous what technology is right now. Who's your team when you're playing? Of course, you're on the Thunder right now as a full-time job, but when you're in the game, who are you playing as? I'm definitely playing with the Thunder as a first pick. Okay. Uh, some sometimes my friends don't like let me play with them, so then sometimes I play with either Houston or Milwaukee. And who do you like playing as a, from Houston? Because it's kind of weird that you get to play as another person that you actually get to know in real life. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I, I play with all of them. I play with all of them. I mean, they're a run and gun team. And it's just fun to get up and down the floor. How many hours do you think you're putting into the game right now? Probably like four hours a day. Not too okay. much. Okay. Four hours is a, it's a decent chunk. I mean, as a 22-year-old, I was probably putting in about... Nine to twelve, but you know, four. I think I think that's totally acceptable. I kind of took a break from it because I was playing it so much in a bubble. That I was like almost losing my mind. Yeah, tell me about this bubble. First of all, what was your room like? Did you have friends nearby? Is it only your teammates you're hanging out with? What is the life of a 22 year old in lockdown basically during COVID? It was fun because I mean we was back playing a game that we loved. But as far as like my room and stuff, I mean, I'm always grateful, but it was a day, the bubble was well. They had a great setup. I mean, they gave us a couple of things that we needed. I mean, at first the food wasn't good at all, but over time the food got better, which was something that like we needed. I feel like everybody needs good food. Without good food, it's, it's hard to perform. So I feel like that got better over time. And as the days went on, I just started becoming immune to it. And then started just trying to find that balance, you know, waking up, Call your friends, talk to your friends, call your parents, talk to your parents. So I spend most of my time playing games on FaceTime. And I read, I read a couple of books while I was in there and stuff like that. But most of the time, just playing games and talking to friends over the phone and doing both at the same time sometimes. 
I hear that. Reading books, something I haven't done since freshman year of college. Um, let's talk a little bit about competition because Josh Hart, clearly a war zone player, but also knows his way around the sticks on NBA 2K. There's so many professional athletes that are competing in this title. And I know guys like Snoop Dogg are starting to organize kind of underground or behind the scenes NBA 2K tournaments. How do you think you would stack up against the rest of the league? If we put you in a 32-man bracket, how far do you go? Uh, I think I think I'll do well for myself, and we should set that up. That's, that 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 would be awesome. I was thinking about it. Josh was saying, you know, I I would I enjoyed the fact that we could play this season, but I don't want the bubble next year. If we have a bubble next year, please tell David Stern and the rest of the crew that I am happy to help organize some broadcast. We will set up some competitions, and I'll be your terrible commentator. But let's talk about your teammates on the Oklahoma City Thunder. First off, who's the biggest gamer in the locker room? Oh, uh, the biggest gamer in the locker room, I'll definitely go with uh, Darius Baisley for sure. Okay, so we're not taking on Darius. Who are we taking free money from? If you had to put $1,000 on the line, who's coughing up the lunch money? I had to put $1,000 up to play NBA 2K with one of my teammates. I'll definitely put it up with Steven Adams. I don't think he plays 2K at all. I think he's more of a more of a combat guy, so I'll definitely pick him. All right, Stevie Adams, free money. You guys heard it here first. 2021 slam dunk champion. Who's going to win the contest next year? 2021 slam dunk. They might get a Hamidou Diallo appearance. So if I'm in it, I'm definitely put in. Mr. Two-time. Mr. Two-time champ, definitely. All right, you've heard us talk quite a bit about NBA 2K1, one of the hottest sports sims on the market right now. And it's time for Hamadou and I to review the game and rate it on a scale to 1 to 100. So, Hamid, start us off. How do you feel about the game right now? What do you like about it? Oh, I think the game is great. I mean, it has a lot of live aspects. And I think 2K did a good job uh, this time around with just making it more realistic. Like, every year it gets more realistic. On a scale to 1 to 100, where do you think this game belongs? I think on a scale of 1 to 100, I'll rate 2K around a 90. I mean, they did a really good job this year, I mean, from improving from the last year's 2K. And they'll eventually get to 100, I think. I mean, making the game as real as it can be, I mean, which is a hard thing to do. So hats off to those guys doing the 2K studios for doing a great job. So what are the things we need to do to get it to 100? What do you want to see improved for the next version? Well, I think I'll add in, like, for the game, I mean, like, like what we do like a little bit more like the celebrations that people do when they score and things like that but like this year they took a big jump from last year's celebration so i could only imagine what it's going to look like for the upcoming one i totally hear you there hamadou now i found the game to be definitely a step forward in the right direction across the board i mean it's improved in player footwork we got ball handling down and now the dribbling is improved as well but on a scale of charlotte bobcats to the la lakers I'd give it an Oklahoma City Thunder. Hamadou, is that a good thing? That's a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> How about a 2021 Thunder? Even better than great? Yeah, 2021 Thunder would be awesome. Future champions, baby. What a great guest we had on the show tonight. That was Hamadou Diallo. Thank you for joining us, bud. <laughs> From playing on the street courts of Queens to jumping over Shaquille O'Neal on live TV, Hamidou Diallo is definitely an inspiration to all of us. Remember, if you don't already, you can follow Hamidou on his social media. His Twitter is Hamidou Diallo. His Instagram, it's Hamidou.Diallo. It's that time in the show, ladies and gentlemen, where I get to sign off, go home, and play Animal Crossing all night long, scuba diving for sea stars. Seriously, it's fun. Get yourself a C-Star. Thank you all for tuning in. And remember, go follow The Gamer Hour on Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, and check out our website, thegamerhour.com, to stay tuned for all of our upcoming shows. Celebrity guests and more gaming mayhem we have lined up for you. From Reuters Studio here in New York City's Times Square, I'm Chris Puckett. Stay gaming, gamers. Now go get your own C-Stars. We'll see you next week on another episode of The Gamer Hour.